y'all know i'm going live but um y'all won't be on camera but but if you are you know just let me know and i can move y'all out the way okay there we go wait wait for the cup wait, wait for the cup you already qualified yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, y'all. So, um, for... all right, we're good. All right. So, can you see me there? Okay, you're there. You're there. Okay. First and foremost, I want to thank all of you for coming and being a part of this. This has been. Uh, quite the experience. I don't want to scare y'all with all the with all the gory details, but it did take a lot to to get this off the ground and I am super excited to finally share it with everyone here as well as everyone watching and whoever's over here. Hi. I would say hi mom, but my mom's actually hi holding the phone. So, um so just a brief we're going to do a brief introduction. It's going to talk about who we are, who I am, and how we got to this point. Um, and Alpha Esports and Technology is focused on three pillars, and I want to explain those three pillars. Uh, it'll make a lot more sense once once I talk about it, because a lot of questions that I've been getting is how you combining video games and technology and cybersecurity, and it actually blends together very well when you kind of uh, explain explain it. And then we're going to kind of go into esports because I know there's a lot of other people who are trying to figure out what is esports, right? Um, why why is esports even a thing? And I'm going to show you that not only is it a thing, but it's actually something that is very real and very lucrative and very accessible for many of us um, who have played games or have any interest in technology. And then we're going to talk about the healthy gaming and community aspect of it. So first and foremost, my name is Javin Jackson. Uh, first and foremost, I am a father to my two beautiful bickering children over there. <laughs> I am also a husband, a son, a brother, and an Air Force veteran. Um, I am also a penetration tester, which is a really fancy but weird way of calling myself a hacker with uh, 15 years of experience in technology and cybersecurity. Um, I hold several certifications. I'm not sure if anybody here knows about the, uh, the tech certifications, but I do have a few industry level search from Microsoft, CompTIA, um, EC Council, um, SANS. Thank you. <laughs> um, I have I, a, a whole bunch. I am also the host of a podcast called InfoSec Unplugged, which is my live streaming podcast. I have also hosted Happy Valley Blue for the last two seasons. Fingers crossed for season three. Talk to Chris and Ron. Hi, Chris. Hi, Ron, if y'all are watching. Um, and I am also a trainer and a LinkedIn learning instructor. So I have a course on LinkedIn learning about the APIs, about security and securing APIs. I actually just signed on a contract for the next version of it. So that should be out hopefully by the end of this year, if not early next year. And I am the owner of Alpha Esports Technology and Alpha Cybersecurity. So that's me. That's me. That's Alpha Cybersecurity. That's InfoSec Unplugged. That's Hacker Valley Blue. And that's a Funko Pop that my kids said looked like me. <laughs> so that's my little mascot. Um, so we're going to do, I guess it looks like the, the slides are a little out of, out of order. But basically, how you doing? So basically, what happened is around 2019 to 2020, I had an idea. Um, I want to bring attention to my son. Um, I love you. But uh, he was a part of the esports program around this time. And during that time is when I first got the idea of 
bringing the two worlds together. Uh, later on in 2020, well, early 2020, I gave my first talk, which was called Hacking and Gaming, which explained how esports and gaming could actually teach you the mindset needed to be a penetration tester or an ethical hacker or have a career in cybersecurity in general. And then it went so well that we were actually supposed to do some things and I was gonna partner with a bunch of different gaming communities and then COVID happened. So no one did anything <laughs> after that. Um, after that, there was a lot of, I guess you could say uh, paralysis on my part. Um, I wanted to partner with a bunch of different communities and a bunch of different companies and get this idea out there. And everybody kept saying, sure, great, let's do it. And then when it came time, it was like a, sorry, not now. So around 2022, um, I got fed up and started doing the research and started pitching the idea to other places that also didn't go too well. So I said, screw it, here we are. And now today we have Alpha Esports Technology and the three pillars um, based off of that research. So the three pillars for my gamers, you'll don't get too angry with me. I know this looks like the Triforce from The Legend of Zelda, <laughs> but I am also a big Zelda fan. I haven't played the new game yet, sorry. Um, but in Zelda, the Triforce um, talks about power, wisdom, and courage. And how those three are perfect balance. I, I know, I know my Zelda history. <laughs> so what I did was I created my own system called um, Play, Learn, and Elevate. And the fonting, the font is a little messed up here, but the Play, Learn, Elevate pillars are focused on the esports and competitive gaming, um, then also the healthy gaming, and then finally the technology and cybersecurity education. So again, you're probably wondering how do those three uh, blend together? So we're gonna first start with the, with the gaming side of it. Before we get started, tell me if any of you have ever heard this or uh, said it. No. Right. Right. Video games are a waste of time. How about this one? Yeah. Video yeah. games rot your brains? Yep. Yeah. Nope. Or any of these. Video games are bad for you. Nothing will nothing will come from playing video games. Video games should not be taken seriously. You never heard that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, on behalf of all of us young kids in that generation, y'all can tell your parents that they can come talk to me because now you can look at them and tell them they were wrong. <laughs> so. Actually, I won't say they were completely wrong. They were partially wrong. Okay, I'll give you some credit. Thank you. So um, they were right in the sense that video games, when done the wrong way, could rot your brain and could have all of these negative effects. And we'll get into that later. But video games actually can be very helpful monetarily as well as um, building character and, and social skills and leadership skills and things that are actually needed in the real world for your child or young adult. In fact, video games have been and continue to be one of the world's most popular and successful and lucrative industries. And if you look at it by the numbers, because I'm a numbers guy, as of 2022, the total number of gamers worldwide is 3 billion. The revenue that they made last year was $184 billion. And in 2003, that number, 2023, that number is expected to increase to 211 billion. And then uh, from a Pew Research study done in 2008, and I made sure I used this study in 2008 because that was 15 years ago, 97% of children between the ages of 12 and 17 play video games. So now in 2008, we were what? On our Xbox 360, it wasn't even Xbox One. It wasn't even in any of the next gen systems yet. Okay, mobile phones were just becoming more and more accessible. Now, everybody here has one. I have seen three year olds with a newer iPhone than than mine. <laughs> so, just imagine now what that number looks like. It's probably a lot more than 97 percent. So, the question of the Hour. What is sports? electronic sports or esports competitive form of video gaming? 
Single competitors or teams can take part in video game contests and organize environments, sort of like what you're sitting in here. And similar to other sports like basketball or football, esports team they uh esports have has a team element where they compete in matches and accumulate a score. At the end of the match, the team or player with the best score wins. Several esports competitions reward their winners with cash prizes, while popular players and teams receive sponsorships, brand deals, and thing and other things from other companies. So um, if you actually look up esports or uh, prizes from esports, I'm pretty sure everyone will see one of the first results that come up is the young, the young, uh, the young man who won was it three million dollars off of Fortnite? Off of Fortnite. Three million. Three million. <laughs> right? <laughs> so why wouldn't we take that seriously? The end, the, the 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 challenge to getting into most organized sports are hard as it is, right? And then they have to go through AAU ball or travel ball. Then they got to go through high school. And sometimes there's a lot of politics and, and 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 popularity contests just to get on those teams. And if they get through all of that and they are and they make it, then they go to college. And then let's say they're really good in college. One percent make it to the league. Right. And yeah, you hear a lot of, you know, the LeBron James and all these other people getting two hundred million dollar contracts with the average salary in in professional sports is is a small percentage of what the stars are making. Unfortunately for our sisters. They make even less. I have a friend uh, who was very interested in playing professional ball and she found out that her cybersecurity career actually paid more than what the average WNBA player makes. So to that, I say, yeah, if you're, if you're willing to let your child go out and practice for two, three hours of playing basketball or football, why not give them that same opportunity and practice in an organized setting to play video games, play something that they love, that, they, that they're interested in, right? It's the same. It's the same concept. It's just our mindset needs to change. A lot of people hear video games or hear esports, and my son was a perfect example. He so he said he told somebody the other day about esports, and they said, "Why don't you play a real sport?" Yeah, guess what? Three million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but the concept of esports and competitive gaming and land centers isn't a new thing. It's just popular now because we have more technology and we have things like Twitch. But if you look back, this is 1972. This was the intergalactic space war competition held at Stanford University. Now, there are several things that I find wrong with this picture. But one, um, it just goes to show you that given the right atmosphere and the right resources, this is at Stanford University. This is one of the <laughs> universities out there, and they're holding an e they're holding a, an esports competition in 1972. Wow. Now, this is more in my current time. Mortal Kombat, uh, the Mortal Kombat arcade tournament that was held years ago. Um, don't worry, we're not going to play Mortal Kombat unless the parents sign off on it. I, I watched I watched a trailer for the last Mortal Kombat. And I was like, I used to play this. <laughs> <laughs> like I was clutching my pearls. Like, it, it, yeah, I know. But it was so cool when we were younger. But now it's like maybe it's the graphics or something. I don't know. It's the anxiety. Like I saw some stuff and I was like, oh, this is never going in my house. <laughs> um, for me, this was the moment where esports really kind of what had my first esports moment if if it'll let me play it it probably won't okay fine whatever look up uh 2000 i think it's the 2008 no 2004 evo tournament i go versus justin from street fighter 3. i was a big street fighter player so when i did compete street fighter and nba 2k were my two games um i had to retire after i had children specifically my son because he wouldn't let me play um 
but th th this was this is what brought me into the competitive video game scene and I, I highly encourage everyone to watch it because this is probably one of the greatest moments in video game competitive video game history uh, so basically the rundown is they're playing the game uh, the, the, the person who's controlling Ken is basically down to like his last third of his health bar and he starts blocking and parrying like in the most epic fashion to win to win the match but to see the to see the reaction of the crowd and then to watch it go viral it just did something to me there where it was just like we do this all the time it yeah. didn't look as cool as that but we do this all the time and there's a room full of people of like-minded people from all over who are accepting of it and only thing they care about is that that person was good at that game. So for me, that's that, that was what really did it. But going back to, is esports a real thing? In 2021, esports was the second highest watched sporting event in, in the US. Only thing that beat it was the Super Bowl. Baseball, basketball, hockey, soccer, which I feel like it's criminal. Soccer is actually really awesome when you watch it live. But esports was number two. And partly in partly because of streaming platforms like YouTube, Twitch, Facebook gaming, uh, they used to be called Mixer. Um, now there's Kit, Trovo, and a whole bunch of other ones. But 84 million people and $184 billion last year. Now that's off the gaming industry. You have streamers who are making a living from essentially their basement, just doing what they just doing what they love to do, talking. And then they have they have companies like Microsoft and Logitech, MSI, all of these big technology companies who are willing to just either give them money or give them funding or give them support and supplies to promote their products. And they're living off of this. And I say that because we have to understand that we're in a different time now, right? The the days of having to go four to eight years in co of college and having the white picket fence and all of that, times are, times are changing. And people aren't, quote unquote, what is the norm these days. And there's a quote from Keith Ledger's Joker from in The Dark Knight that says, if you're good at something, never do it for free. People play, everybody plays video games. 97% of kids play video games. So why not give them the opportunity to also make a living off of it, doing something that they enjoy, rather than having to worry about, you know, punching the clock for something that they really don't want to do. If they're good enough, they're talented enough and have the resources, give them an opportunity to do what they love. So the other part, and I actually made this slide when my son told me what they what that person said about esports not being a real sport. Um, as of as of last year, East there, there are eighty six hundred over eighty six hundred esports teams across the U.S. that are in high school. Almost nine thousand esports teams in the high schools across the U.S. In Georgia alone, we're over one hundred and fifty. College esports programs, 240. But this last number here, scholarships. They're giving out college scholarships for video games. $16 million. That was that was last, that was as of 2021. Um, I'm sure that number has uh, gone up because from 2020 to 2021 it doubled. It was 8 million in 2020, and now it's 16 million in 2021. And it's not just for the people playing the game. It's also the managers, the shoutcasters. So a shoutcaster is essentially a play-by-play -play announcer, just like any sporting event. You have a color commentator and you have the and you have the other announcer there, and they're giving you the play-by-play -play rundown of what's happening during that. They're giving scholarships for that. They're giving scholarships for people who are great coaches and managers. There's a young lady here who got a full scholarship, and she doesn't play the game regularly. She just knows where she she tells everybody where to go on the map. She's like, this is where you need to be at this time. This is what you, so she knows the game well enough where she can she can read the game. And they're giving out scholarships, $16 million. So 
I don't know if you can really see this, but um, this is a list. This is basically uh, one of the parts that we call the esports ecosystem. So these are all the related professions that that are involved with esports or the gaming industry. So you have communication, so PR, your digital communication, your information technology, your broadcasting, uh, technical producers, network technicians, you have events and organization, media, performance and optimization, you have health management, performance management, you have entertain, you have entertainment, education, administration, business, sales, marketing. These are all regular jobs, people. They just happen to be for video games or video game companies or video game productions. So, and, and to break it down even further, NACEF, the Network of Academic and Scholastic Esports Federations, actually came up with this chart in 2018. And this essentially also breaks down the, the ecosystem. So just from playing video games or being a video game player, you can develop entrepreneur skills you can, where you can do web developing, marketing. You can be a content creator. That's, that's, that's a big thing. They have strategists where they're coming up with coaches and, and analysts. Then you have the organizers, your general managers, your event organizers, your IT support. Again, all from a controller or a keyboard. It's, it's basically called transferable skills. So when I first got into tech, I felt like I just needed everything to be linear. I thought I needed to know everything. And then as I got into tech, as some of my techies will know, a lot of it is stuff that we already know. A lot of it is stuff that we've learned previously. Um, going to, I, I'll get into my story a little bit later, but video games is what got me into tech. Video, my, my first successful hack was a video game system. I don't know the statute of limitations, so I'm not going to talk anymore about it. <laughs> but my first, right? My mom is right here. And <laughs> I used to do things like, can I get in the house and bypass the, the, the alarm? Right? Why? Because I saw certain things in video games and said, hey, can I really do that? Like, technology and cybersecurity is nothing but a keyboard skills and a bit of curiosity. Right? That's the whole purpose. But like, let's demystify that right now. Everybody looks at cybersecurity and they think, oh my gosh, because you hear things on the news. When they say sophisticated attack, most of us techies know it was a phishing email. <laughs> yeah. Right? So we need to demystify that for the for the younger generation. So again, they know that they have the skills. I have a talk, um, and I'm not just trying to plug it because it was my talk, but I have a talk that I did in 2020, which, which started all of this, called Hacking and Gaming. And I literally used uh, Fortnite when one, one, one Saturday y'all were practicing, and I took some pictures of the, of the gameplay and, and talked about the five phases of, uh, of a security assessment or a penetration test. And I used Fortnite as the, 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 the example. So just to, as a quick rundown, you jump off the bus. Yes, there's a flying bus in Fortnite for those who don't know. Um, but you jump off the bus. And the first thing you do is you're running around and you're trying to survey the area. That's your scanning and enumeration. That's your reconnaissance, right? Then you start supplying up. So now you're looting certain areas. You're getting, you're getting your supplies. You see someone off into the distance. You pick out your long range weapon of choice and you start, no, they're not even exploiting it. Now you're, you're poking and prodding. So you're testing for the vulnerability. Now their shields are down, their shields are cracked, they're vulnerable. Next, that, so now that's your vulnerability analysis. After your vulnerability analysis, the next step in a penetration test is exploitation. So now you get close enough, you get out your bigger weapon, your shotgun or what have you, and players eliminated, right? So now that's your, you successfully exploited your target. Now that when that player, when that player gets eliminated, they leave a bunch of tools and materials on the ground. This is your looting, this is your privilege escalation because now you have that. And then as you progress through the game, now you're pivoting because now you have to go and do it all over again. And at the end of the, at the end of every assessment, you are given a report. But at the end of Fortnite, you are given what? Your statistics. So it tells you how many eliminations, how many assists, how many, what, what, everything that you did, how long you were on the map. It is literally the same concept. So now, if you take the keyboard, if you take the controller or that keyboard away and put them in front of a Linux terminal and say, hey, now here's a list of commands to do that. 
you, my friends, are on the path to a six-figure salary. It's just a matter of taking those skills that you've learned and transferring it. You already have the situation. You already have the awareness. You already have. You already know how to scan the area. You already know how to look for certain things. You already know how to see certain things that are familiar to you and go, oh, I know. I, I know how to exploit that. I know how. I know how to crack that shield. I know how to do that. It's the same concept. So now we got into the esports stuff. Now let's talk into the negative, the, the the gaming side. So before we do that, I'm going to talk about the negative side. And I know y'all looking at me crazy, like why is this person trying to get us to invest in and in, in work with him if he's going to show us the negative side of video games? Well, because in cybersecurity, you can't fix it. You can't fix a vulnerability until you know it exists. You can't fix a vulnerability until it's been reported. So according so according to the World Health Organization. Playing too many video games can lead to social and physical, social, physical, and psychological issues, including an, addi an, addi uh, an addiction to gaming. So there's social, brain, attention, anger, and aggression. So that's your rage quitting and things like that. And um, your physical, right? So we we agree. These are all things why our parents probably told us that they're not good. But the part that they don't see is that the positive effects that when video games are done the right way. You're taught leadership skills. Anybody who's played in a team setting, whether it's Fortnite or Overwatch or Call of Duty or NBA 2K, knows some, that at some point you're going to have to communicate. And yes, the communicating to the outside just sounds like a whole crack, go, go, I'm going, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm going, I'm going. But that's communication, right? Going back to the young lady who was a coach and a manager, they have to trust in her leadership abilities to get to, to, to get on the map where she said where, where they need to be. It teaches communication skills. Now, again, yelling one word three times, four times, five times, that's not effective communication. But when you start having strategy sessions, you start looking at the film, you start looking at the different things that happen during the game, and now you're talking with your team, you're talking with your fellow players, you're building that. So anybody who's on Discord, anybody who's on Reddit, I don't recommend Reddit without your parents' permission, but <laughs> anybody who are on these platforms can tell you that they can be a great resource to communicate. Nine times out of 10, I'm like, hey, I don't know how to get past this stage, or how do you get, how do you do this strategy? Okay, how do you do aerials and rocket league? All right? There's this, there, there's, there's hundreds of Discord channels. So, the, so you have your communication skills. Your create it, it increases your creativity. Also, your learning and cognitive skills, um, your collaboration skills. Your and it can also improve your mental health. Again, when done the right way. And then there's a bunch of other ones. And that's what we that's what we try to do. We want to deal with the negative effects so we know what they are and build strategies around it. So, like I said, in cybersecurity, if you know that something is vulnerable. You find the patch, you find the fix for it, and then you fix it. It's the same thing. So if if we know that there's anger and aggression issues, then we teach them how not to rage. We teach them how to communicate effectively. That's why there's rules plastered over here. Um, I'm a big martial arts head. So in martial arts match, matches, you start every match with a sign of respect. That's what we do here. You start every match with a sign of respect. Yes, there's going to be a little bit of trash talking. It happens. It makes for it make it makes for a good match. But at the end of the match, you finish the match the same way you started. So you show a sign of respect. No one leaves here negative. There's no toxicity here. Everyone is included. That's another thing that they don't do in traditional sports. Esports and video games has the opportunity to be an inclusive place for everyone, no matter their skills, their physical abilities, their mental, their mental capacity, or what have you. All that matters is, can you play the game? Can you enjoy it? And are you a pleasure to be around? Now, I get it. There are also some things when you play online. But that's why we have it here. That's why I didn't run like everybody else and start with an online platform. Because there's something about this that brings the community together. When I was younger, every Saturday, and she'll tell you, every Saturday I got up, I did my chores, and I did what? I got on the bus and I went to the arcade. Most of my friends I met at the arcade. Yes, I played ball. Guess what? Freshman year, 
fractured my ankle. Never was the same since. Tried again sophomore year, messed up my ankle a second time, and I was like, yep, we're done. Here. That was my that there was my there was my MBA career. If I didn't have those friends who also played video games and enjoyed things like comic books and anime, I'd be lonely. <laughs> Here's a community here where everybody can be inclusive. Again, if taught the right way. That's what we're trying to do. Now. Video games and tech and cybersecurity. Again, I kind of touched on it earlier, but I am I, I advise everyone just to look, look up the Google Saturn <laughs> CD swap trick, right? So the Sega Saturn was an old system, um, and we used to go to Chinatown when we lived in Connecticut, and there were a bunch of awesome games that were only playable on Japanese systems. Yep, but. Uh, we heard a little birdie told us that if you were to trick the system into thinking that the CD door was always closed, you could not only play those games, you could burn them on a regular CD under a, cer on, on a certain format, and you could play the game. So now the name of the game was, well, how do you do that? Oh, you have to take apart the Sega Saturn. Absolutely not. My mother spent a whole bunch of money and if I broke it and I had told her and I told her that I took it apart, I would be broken right next to the video game system. <laughs> so we started tinkering around with a different bunch of different things, and we found that a toothpick or a Q-tip did the same purpose. Did the same purpose. So you pop open the CD door, boop, let it rest on it. It spins. Now we're playing a whole bunch of video games, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. I don't know. Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, allegedly. Um, and then all my Konami, my Contra players, y'all know this one. Right? Yeah. You put that in. Who needs to worry about <laughs> starting over? <laughs> right? And then you have other ones, the code to play to, to, to fight Mike Tyson and Punch Out. You know, uh, Street Fighter, when the, the unlock the turbo code or to unlock the, all the other players. Down R, up L, Y, B, right? Ele no, 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 no. That, no, no, that, that, that's Capcom. That's okay. They, 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 they gave out that one. But it just kind of goes back to my previous point that these are, the, these are different skills that you can actually use in cybersecurity or technology. Then in my research, I found that Carnegie Mellon, Carnegie Mellon University, actually came out with a document that explains video using video games as a training tool to, to actually prepare the next cyber warriors. Then there's a, there's a few other ones. So I just have these here. Um, and then I was blessed to meet and partner with a bunch of different companies. So on these computers, there's actually uh, an app here called Haiku. And Haiku, Haiku is a cybersecurity training platform. Um, you pay for the license, obviously, or you pay for the membership. But you're learning real world Linux and cybersecurity skills through the video game. Um, for my career oriented folks, if you have a LinkedIn profile and you pay for the Haiku Pro license, it'll actually update your LinkedIn profile as you learn these skills. So now that makes you more marketable when you start looking and everybody's looking at your LinkedIn profile. There are other there are other uh, platforms, uh, there's like coding game, there's code combat that are teaching skills like Python, JavaScript, things that I just felt were too difficult for me when I got started. And now they're putting them in a form where you can learn them and not even know you're actually learning them because you're, you're just more interested in the game. So again, play, learn, and elevate. So we're using esports and gaming as essentially the tool to introduce everyone into the world of technology and education. In the coming weeks and months, there will be more information out there on who we're partnering with. I just don't want to jump ahead of things. I want to make sure that the ink is actually dried on these contracts because, again, I don't want to get into the horror stories of everything. But by building a community of like-minded individuals and teaching them that they already have the skill set to land a career in something that they may have thought was 
too hard or they thought they weren't smart enough. You're I'm I'm the first one to tell you you're 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 not. You're you don't not not that you're not. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't think that way. You you you're more than you're more than smart enough. You're more than qualified. The fact that you're here today shows that you have the skills. I've seen some of some of the stuff that you guys are doing on these games. Again, it's just a it's just a matter of teaching the transferable skills, and that's what if given the opportunity, I would love to do for each and every one of you here. So um, I know I said I wasn't going to take too long, but I did. But I do thank you and enjoy the open house. If there's any questions, I will be here, and we're here till what did I say? Five. Yeah, we're here till five. So thank you, everyone, and you know, y'all can unpause and go back to what you're doing. Woo There's actually people. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't see the comments in the live stream, so I'm sorry about that. I appreciate y'all watching. So I'm gonna end the stream here because uh we got kids here gaming and yeah, so if y'all are in the Georgia area, 1300, Petrie Industrial, Suite 3109. I'll see y'all later.